Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse Project Me with Tiffany Carter. So have you guys ever thought about the fact that you're just one decision away from a totally different life? Well, my guest today is living proof of this fact. Jesse Harris Boughton is a former professional race car driver, a successful entrepreneur who has built six and seven figure businesses, a mom of four, and the founder of Millionaire Mompreneur Project. So welcome, Jesse. I can't wait for everyone to hear all about these decisions you've made in your life. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to come over here. You know, I'm a huge fan. Can you guys see me like bowing to Miss Tiffany? <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I we didn't even like we didn't know each other. And we found each other on social media, which again, is like the power of social, right? I mean, Back in Amen. the day, you guys, we had to like go to a shit ton of networking events and we had to do all sorts of things. This is way easier and you can connect to way more people. So why I was so excited for my audience to hear about you besides like you're just a, the whole race car driver thing's just badass, period. Um, but I really love when you talk about like you really are just one decision away from a completely different life. What we do in our minds is we build things up to being such a thing when really it is about one decision. So tell me about, take us back, right? And how you got into being a race car driver, then how you left there so we can see how these one decisions kept propelling you forward in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll, I'll do the abbreviated version here because I'm a talker, which is why I also think we get along well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can get away with saying that. But uh, yeah, so I kind of grew up in a lifestyle with no real dad present. And then he passed away when I was young. So I had a single mom just busting her hump, showing me how hard you have to work to get ahead. And even then, never really getting ahead. Right. And we are a product of our environment. And so I fell into believing that, you know, although I wanted more out of life as a teenager, I would never have it because that just wasn't what we Harris's did. Right. Um, I really kind of fell victim to coming, living in a small town and so on. And so I had this dream to be two things as a, a teenager, I was probably about 15, 16 years old. And I decided I wanted to be a race car driver and a mom. And I was going to spend 20 years driving professionally all over the country, getting paid to drive race cars. And then I was going to retire and become a mom and just live out the end of my life in bliss. Well, <laughs> I started traveling to different race events in the Northeast because I live in upstate New York, just trying to introduce myself to people. And I probably spent about $60,000 over the course of a few years just in travel expenses and, um, you know, buying my way into ticket, ticketed events and such. And really not getting anywhere. You know, lots of people that would, I was like 19 years old. I was doing this from like 17 to 20. 
And so they'd like, you know, pat you on your head. Oh, you're cute. You want to be a race car driver? Yeah, you're, you're cute, you know? And I would get so annoyed and I would just continuously show up, show up, show up, hand out my resume and all of that and just wait for my big break, which like never came until I finally was like, screw it. I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go of this dream. If it's meant to be, it will be. And I'm just going to move on. Back in my hometown, one weekend at a little local holiday uh, barbecue backyard event, I start talking with someone who's a family friend of a friend of a friend. And he um, mentions he has an interest in race cars and so on. And so I tell him that I have this dream of being a big race car driver, but I've kind of let it go, you know, the ripe old age of 20. I let it go because <laughs> I was sick and tired of the grind, right? We've all been there in one way or another in our businesses, etc. And he has this great like two hour conversation with me and I'm all about it. Just thinking that this is nothing. And finally he says to me when I said goodbye, nice to meet you. He says, I have, um, I have a card of a guy who might be looking for a driver like you, you know, you should give him a call. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Peace out, dude. You're from New York. Nobody knows anybody in New York. (laughs) I'm country New York. Okay guys, not New York city, New York. We're like six hours. So, um, I decide to ignore the card, not make the call for a while until finally this guy gets my number. He asks his family friend, gets my number, calls me up. He's like, why have you not called them? They're waiting for your call. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is legit. Like this is legit. I make the phone call whirlwind later. I end up being flown out to Puerto Rico, getting in this car, driving the pants off of it. 306 miles an hour. The very first time I ever went A to B down the quarter mile. They offer me the job to drive immediately. And five years later, I'm the winningest driver in the history of that division and being invited up to race for the very top division in the drag racing league. The story that I want to share there is my one decision that finally paid off for me after like five years was that I let go. I stopped strangling my dream by trying so hard and coming from a place of fear, thinking I would never get it. Like I manifested everybody say no to me for five years. Yep. And I know you resonate with this. So your, your listeners will, and that's what I know they want to take from that. Right. So, um, you know, fast forward on, I decide to retire from racing because it was a great experience, but I'm 27. I'm engaged. I want to get married. And, um, I do. It's like, great. I retire. I get married. Boom. One kid, boom, two kids. I fall into the deepest depression. So unhappy. And I have a great life, right? Like we have a multi six figure business. We own a physical therapy clinic in our hometown. Um, you know, belong to all the things in the community. Like we had 500 people at our wedding because all of our patients at our clinic insisted on being there. And, um, I'm super unhappy. I'm not just like postpartum depressed. I'm depressed because I feel like all I am now is a wife and a mom, which there's nothing wrong with dude. Remember it was my dream. However, I fell right back into the same thing. I was like strangling this beautiful blessing of being a wife and mom, because I insisted that it was supposed to feel so much more blissful than that. Right? Like I wasn't grateful for everything I had achieved. And so my one decision, um, again, in that moment was I was basically cursing God. So I'm a, I'm a God believer, whether you are or not, that's okay. Um, I definitely just believe in alignment, the universe, karma, spirits, whatever. But, um, you know, for me, it was a sign and it was another sign of like, sister, you got to let go. You are just trying so hard to be what you think everybody else wants you to be in this world. And you're not just being, being what you're meant to be. And, um, that kind of came in the form of the book, the purpose driven life by Rick Warren. I never read, never read it all. Like I went all through high school, did lots of book reports, but only read the cliff notes. Like I was not a reader because I struggled in school with reading growing up. And I just 
when I was done, you know, crying on my basement floor, trying not to wake my kids up and my husband, I looked up and this book was staring me in the face and I had never even seen it before. I have no idea really where this book came from. We don't have books in my house. My husband doesn't, I mean, he reads clinical books, right? For um, our business, but that's it. And so I opened this book and the very first thing I read is literally saying like, guy, girl, your dreams get to evolve and change as you grow. And it was as if I was being told like, so you always wanted to be a race car driver and a mom and you've done that. What's next? And I was like, I don't know. There's nothing left for me. Like I've done it. What's next? So, you know, I mean, it's kind of like obnoxious. It sounds like I really should have been grateful for exactly where I was, but sometimes you have to have that that slap in the face to realize how ungrateful you are. And something a mentor of mine, Tony Robbins says all the time is, um, you have to trade your expectations for appreciation. And that was something else that I heard the very next day. And so that's always stood out to me. You know, when you are in alignment and you choose to be open to something more, something different, it will come to you. And I am certain that I avoided signs like those for years before, you know, they were always there. I just wasn't willing to see them. And so that was the day of my new life, right? Like for some people, it's the day you accept Jesus into your life. I always accepted him, although I didn't really believe he was there for me because I had a, you know, a past history with loss and failure in my life. But, um, yeah, I mean, super long roundabout story of how I decided to not only improve my life, but then share that out to others that, you know, they have power within them and you need to use your power to pursue more of what you want instead of restraining it, whether it's a, a growing your business, a better marriage, better health, right? Better mothering, whatever it is. Well, I want to touch on something you said of you did the shoulds, right? I should have been grateful. I mean, hello, like, first off, there's almost no female race car drivers, even to this day, right? I mean, we all know the right. whatever the chick's name, who's the go daddy spokesperson. What is her name? Danica something? Yeah. Danica. Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's I mean, that's the only one I can think of in mainstream. So first off, that's, that's just amazing. My fiance is in the car industry. So he le- he's gonna freaking love this episode and be obsessed with you. Like, that's <laughs> amazing. Whereas I'm like in the car, and I'm like scared when he goes fast. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But you, when you said, I should have been grateful, I had all these things, right? We had all the money in the bank. We're the member of the country club. I have the great husband. I have the kids. That's where I, that's where the word grateful and gratitude gives me a rash because it makes, especially women, men too, but especially women and on top of it, moms, makes them feel like shit when they do have a lot, they have beautiful children, maybe they don't have a ton of money, but they do have, you know, they have great kids, they have a great marriage, maybe they don't, you know, they get to choose to stay at home with their kids. And then you have this depression, and you're, you don't feel fulfilled. And then comes the guilt, God, I should be grateful, you know, and then on top of it, if you're someone who, you know, believes in, you know, have a spiritual practice, then there's more guilt. Like, oh, my God, you know, how horrible of me that I'm not more grateful. And then we just pile it on ourselves, which does not get us out of that state whatsoever. So I always say to people like, you know, it's it's okay if you feel like shit and if you're depressed, that's part of the human existence. And we don't move the needle or make change when we're happy or even content. We only make a change in our life when we're in pain. So pain has pain has a huge purpose and a huge power. So when you when you realized, right, you got those signs, which again, I'm like, you guys, we all get the signs. It's whether we see them. Sometimes they're there and we just We don't want to see them. Sometimes they're moving too fast and we don't see them. And other times, maybe it's just not our time to see them. It was clearly your time. I mean, you got knocked over the head with it. So when you're like, you said, well, I didn't know what to do. You know, I did the two things or actually the three. You you had kids, you're married and the race car driving. I did those things already. I didn't know what. How did you figure out what your next thing was going to be then? Okay. So it actually leads into exactly what you just said when you were talking about the pain, because pain is beautiful. 
if you allow it to be right. The problem that holds people back and, and is what held me back was avoiding the pain, right? Denying it and trying to push it away further. And that's what I did my, my whole life, right? Like my dad died when I was young and I didn't ever accept that. I was pissed. I was pissed at him. I was pissed at my mom. I was pissed at God. I was freaking, I got robbed, right? And that's how I viewed it. And for, you know, on later into my race car driving days, I denied it. And then I denied this and I denied that and so on. All of the pains that held me back in my life through, you know, struggle and failures and losses, I always just tried to say, screw it. I'm better than that. I'm going to rise above. But it wasn't that I accepted it. When I finally accepted the pain and cried, not because I was in pain, but because this pain was exactly what I was supposed to see as my way out, only then did things change for me. And it actually launched me into, um, I wrote a book called The Rush Revolution. It's called Revving Up Self-Happiness Through the Power of Intentional Living. So this oh, is where wow. I, I didn't know you wrote a book. Oh, cool. Yep. She's showing me the book on video. You guys can't see it, but is that you on the cover? That's me. Oh, cute. I didn't know you had a book. Oh, awesome. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, well, that was the next step, right? So I finally accepted the pain and I was able to, I mean, I truthfully had moments of it throughout the years, right? Like it kind of catapulted me, the loss of my dad, um, over time catapulted me into the health industry, right? Because he dropped dead at 36 of a heart attack. Incidentally, I'm the same, mm -hmm, incidentally, I'm the same age. So ask me how that went over this year. Um, (laughs) that reality as a mom of four, I was like, whoa, and, and Lo and behold, I actually had to go for a stress echo because I had major abnormalities and they terrified me, told me to get my will in place. (laughs) I'm fine, by the way. Since then, totally ridiculous. I'm fine. They just overreacted, which I would prefer. I appreciate that. But, um, you know, I realize now that some of me accepting the pain, although I, I didn't realize it then, was that's why I went into the health industry. It's because I knew that I had to make some purpose come out of that pain of losing him. And I didn't want that for myself or anyone I loved. And I also wanted to teach people a better, a better way. Right. Um, and so that's what ended up why I wrote the book, because I share in here lots of different things for me that were all about like an intentional living lifestyle of how I was able to accept these things that caused me pain in my life and take them, even though they were a problem, take them and turn them into an opportunity for something more, for something positive to spin out of it. Right. Um, and then from there, I just decided that I loved everything that I was learning from my research into, um, life coaching skills, right? Of course, google.com is everybody's best friend. And so I just kind of started reading some personal development books and looking at some stuff online. And I decided that I needed to get certified as a life coach because I could really help help people. Because when I was sharing on social media, just freely as, you know, friends, so many people were resonating with what I said. And it was not a truth that they understood about me because again, outwardly I was living this great life, you know, everything was grand. And inwardly I was like wondering why I was even here on this earth. Like seriously, would the world be better without me? And I'm, I'm not shy about saying that anymore. For a long time, I was embarrassed to say that, but I think that it's, in those moments that again, I've seen the beauty of what could come out of it. I know I, I believe I will never go there again, but I knew in that moment, like it is my job to save people from that. And if I lead with that somehow, this just might turn into a business and, you know, we'll go from there because that was something that was filling my cup up. So my husband and I own a physical therapy clinic and we've been doing that for 17 years since we basically, since we've been together long before you're married, his dream though. And I lifted him up and I ran that business with him all these years, working 60, 70 hours, and then hustled like a boss and built my one-on-one coaching business and killing myself, actually backing myself into a wall to where I really didn't enjoy it anymore. Um, which then got me all confused again, you know, the roller coaster ride of emotions, especially entrepreneurship and, um, not really understanding why all of this was happening because I thought I was free, right? I thought I was free. And again, I was just limiting myself. So then I decided to transition again into what 
um, resonated with me most. I really struggled when I went into the space from brick and mortar into online entrepreneurship, like really struggled. That's a huge difference. Oh my Lord. Huge, huge. And I thought I was going to hit it out of the ballpark because we had a million dollar business. No, it's totally like, different. I spent a lot of money and didn't make any for two years. <laughs> and it was, you know, it is what it I'm is. I'm not surprised think- by that. That's a good for you guys to hear because, you know, you, my listeners know. And so for, you know, new listeners today, my first business, TLC Enterprises, which I still have, is a digital marketing company in the niche of um, pharmaceutical industry, medical, physical therapy, um, you know, larger group practices, hospital chains, right? They're corporate clients. So I also thought that me creating my second company, you know, my personal brand, my baby project me with Tiffany, I thought, well, I'm already a Facebook ads expert, right? I'm already digital marketer, communicator, all these things. I was like, this is this is gonna, this is not that big of a difference. Wrong, huge (laughs) difference, because I'm dealing with people like not corporations where I'm dealing with people and like their direct lives and their direct tie to their business, like small business owners, night and day different. So I'm glad that you shared that because even people where you read, you know, like you, you hear someone 17 years as an entrepreneur, it's like, oh, well, no wonder she created, you know, she created the millionaire mompreneur project. Like that was probably like easy, like no big deal. No, it's total. It's totally different. Although you do have a lot of great skill sets, you know, already from being an entrepreneur and you already are entrepreneurial minded, which is, you know, really more than half the game. But you guys see, she said it still took two years. So I want you to hear that in terms of being validated. Like this thing is not, it's not, it's not, it's not designed to be some instant success yeah, there are some unicorns out there where that can happen. Right. But it's, it's really, it's really rare. It's really rare. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, I see it now as some struggle is, is a rite of passage, almost like, if you don't experience that struggle and that pain, then you don't even know how to to appreciate it when you get to the other side. Um, So it's funny, because, of course, now my business is to help people move through that struggle quicker. Right. But I want to make sure that they've struggled. I actually don't want to work with the brand new business owner that wants to hit six figures right out of the gate. Like, no, cause you aren't going to trust everything that I say. You aren't going to lean in. Right. Um, so as I say that struggle, I really feel like is a rite of passage. Um, I also don't think that you have to, you know, spend a hundred thousand dollars and make nothing like I did. <laughs> right. Let's just be honest. Right. But um, you learned those lessons so that you could teach those things, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you felt, you know, why am I even here on this earth? Which I've been there quite a few times in my life. And it's like, we felt those things and we've been there for a greater and grander purpose. I know what so many people are listening or thinking. I have like this intuitive ability to know what my listeners are thinking, especially the moms are going, how in the hell did Jesse have time to write a book and to start another business and with the kids and you already have, you know, your physical therapy business. So let's talk about that because I'm sure you get this question all the time. Yeah. So it's actually the baseline of the book, right? Intentional living. And you have to be intentional about everything that you do. So, so many of us think we can just wing it. We think we can go into anything in life with this grand idea that's actually really broad. Um, and we're just going to make it happen because we're going to figure it out as we go, right? No, not at all. That's why I spun my wheels for two years, right? I had to find somebody that could show me the way. And so I did end up investing in a coach at the same time as I took control of my life. And I have, um, you can see now in my office, but your listeners can't, but I have calendars, two calendars that I live by in life. I call them my content calendars. It's something I share freely all the time to my audience, but I have one that says everything I need to put out in my business, everything that I need to put out in my life, right? Like appointments, et cetera. It is my, my content delivery calendar per se. And then I also have a content 
calendar. That's my creation time. Like, okay, how am I going to fit all this into my lifestyle? So we own three, six and seven figure businesses. I only work at most 20 hours a week because in order to feel like I am truly living a life that serves me, I can't work more than that. I want to be the one that gets my kids up in the morning and serves them breakfast and takes them to school and picks the baby, well, one of the babies up from pre-K in the middle of the day and goes to every baseball practice and hockey practice and cooks dinner within reason, right? We now have a helper. I have a part-time um, nanny and we have a food service and like we're not we're not stupid, right? Somebody who cleans my house, all of those things. Um, I choose that, right? Because for me, I'm better having joyfully present time with things that serve me, which is time with my family and time in my business. I love what I do in my business with the people I network and collaborate with like you and with my clients. Like it fills me up. But if I do it for more than 20 hours a week, I become mean Jesse. I become the person, <laughs> right? Like seriously, you people are like, you're always so happy. You're always so like full of energy. Yeah, because I'm freaking intentional with everything that I do. You can't own three, six and seven figure businesses and write a book and coach 20 one-on-one -on -one clients and have a membership of hundreds and so on. Like you can't do that and not be strict with your schedule, right? I agree. Of course I... Yeah. And I still have some freedom built in there. If things got to shift and change, like, yeah, that's going to happen. But because I have such a strict schedule, I'm able to much more comfortably not freak out than when something happens like that. It's really hard for most people, whether they have kids or not, to here's where so many um, entrepreneurs dream and dream chasers get stuck. You know, they might already be miserable in that job or not miserable, but they know they're meant for something more. They're a stay at home mom and they were in a situation like you where it's like, you know, I love being a mom, but like, OK, there's there's more to life than this and there's nothing wrong with that. But then it's like, how in the hell they get stuck in the thought of and the limiting of belief of I, how would I have time to write a book or create a course, or start a company. And then the other part is energy. How would I have the energy when I barely have time to even like, you know, take a shower without my like kids like barreling down the door. So I, it can't just be that you're intentional with your time, you must have hardcore boundaries in your household. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I have boundaries within for myself, but then yes, outwardly as well. So Number one, I used to be a yes girl and I still struggle with this. Like I, I never want to say no to anybody, whether it's my kid, um, or the neighbor down the road, right? Like, Oh, could you watch my two kids for five hours? No, no. But I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll just take, put them all in my truck. We'll go. But, 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 you know, like I had to be really good about that. Number one, I had to really set up boundaries with people outside of me. Most importantly, like my family, I love my family, like my, my, maybe not my immediate family with kids and husband, but others who they don't mean it. They just know that I'll always, always do it, fix it, save it. Right. And I had to say things like, okay, I started out slow. I can help, but I can do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Not now. You know what I mean? Like I can do it tomorrow at one. I have 30 minutes, you know, come meet me at my house instead of me running to you and sort of like that. But also personally, like I wake up at 428 every morning, Monday through Friday. Wow. Hand no, like no exceptions 428 and then 430 is the second alarm. Cause once in a great blue moon, you're just tired and you don't hear the first one. But that means that I also go to bed by nine o'clock every night because I know I need like between six and seven hours. There's just, I can't do it at less than that. After a while I will again, turn into mean Jesse. So <laughs> <laughs> that makes me laugh because we all have that side of ourselves and your name for yourself is like so much more PC. Like I'm just like, I become like a raging bitch to be frank. Bitch, <laughs> bitch Jesse. Well, I have kids. They're seven, five, three and one. So yeah. And it's funny oh, because it's funny because whenever I get really riled up and I, and I do swear, right? Like I actually am a very passionate person. And when I get super hyped up, like when I speak at events and stuff, you can guarantee the F bomb's going to fall off my lips. So I always have to make sure that people are okay with that. Right. Depending on what kind of event you're at. 
But once in a while, I was actually pretty excited about something not too long ago. And so I was telling my husband and I just dropped the F-bomb. And my seven-year-old looked at me and he was like, what's wrong with you, mom? Are you okay? Like he thought something was wrong because he only perceives that word as a bad word, not as in a descriptive way as it could mean something happy to it. I was like, no, baby, I'm so happy. This is fantastic. And he was like, that's the word you use to be happy. It was just, he's seven. So he doesn't, you know, he only perceives things the way that he's been told. And we're always like, that's a bad word. And so now we realize we need to adjust some of the things that we share. But yeah, like I say, it's all about state, right? Which is, I'm kind of shifting here a little bit, Tiffany, but I know you're okay with it. For me, I have to take control of my state. So I have boundaries in every way but I have to take control of my state too. So the name of the book I told you is called Rush Revolution. Rush is an acronym for revving up self-happiness, which doesn't just mean like happy, yay, yay, life is grand. For me, it really means like feeling fulfilled, right? Living a life that has passion and purpose and such. And so for me, I have to put myself in a state every single day at 428. And then sometimes three, four, five times, throughout the day, depending on what's going on, to where I can take control of what I need to, right? And see those opportunities in every problem and not want to rip somebody's head off when I lose $1,000 because they didn't do something right, you know, um, on my team. I, I don't think that I'm a mean person to work for, right? Like we've shifted in all of my businesses as I'm very much an owner versus an operator. It's how I only work 20 hours. We have a team in every area. But if I don't stay in a state that serves me, I call it the Queen Jessie state. So see, I go from Queen Jessie to Mean Jessie. <laughs> and I call it Queen because back when I used to drive professional race cars, the name of my car, I didn't name it this, was called the Queen of Diamonds. And I had to get in this car five times a, a weekend that could go zero to 300 in less than five seconds. So it's five G's off the start line, which is the same um, power as a F5 fighter airplane, okay? This car had the power to not only take me to the finish line really fast and win, but it also had the power to kill me in an instant. And I was very aware of that. So I never got into that car in a pissy mood because my mm. boyfriend at the time pissed me off or my boss did or, or like, or like hung over or something like that. Oh yeah. Well, I can't say I never had a little too much to drink to before. I'm going to be honest. Like this yeah. is, this is reality. Like I, at times would get in situations, we had to go to lots of events and these big sponsors would be there and they'd be serving you wine after wine after wine. And then you'd wake up at six in the morning and you're like, I have to go to interviews and then go race later on that day. And I was like, I can't, my head pounds right now. I mean, wait, we might be, I might be mad. I might actually be a little hungover. I might this or that. But the truth is, is you have to get yourself in a state where you are in control and you are the person that you need to be to achieve what you want to do. And out of 650 races in five years, I only lost one. Wow. I'm, yeah. Like I say this not to chew my horn and I know that you and your listeners don't think that, but like I say it because that wasn't a fluke. I was racing against men who had been out there for 30 and 40 years and were the best in the industry that I looked up to as a child. And I kicked their ass week in and week out, right? That wasn't because I got in that car and was like, I really hope I win. I really hope I this. I got in that car and I said, I knew I was the person that I needed to be to win that race. I never raced them. I always raced myself, meaning I just did what I needed to do from A to Z perfectly. And the one time I lost a race, I got in my head. So interestingly enough, my next book that comes out is called Shut Up and Drive a purpose-driven roadmap to get out of your head and claim victory on your goals. And it's because the power or the difference between where you are now and where you want to be is just simply you taking control of your mindset, which is why I resonate with you so much, right, Tiffany? But it wasn't just that intention. It wasn't just boundaries. It was state. And I have to show up every day for my business for my marriage, for my motherhood as the queen Jesse that I need to be to have a good freaking life. Yeah. I mean, I love how you said, I didn't just go, I hope I win or say a mantra. Like 
I win yeah. all races or it's a, it's a embodied state. It's physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual. The, the difference I see with people who are successful in whatever it is they do is they're not competing with others or competing with themselves. They stay in their own lane and all puns are intended with that. Um, yep. But they stay in their own lane and you just know. You do what it takes to get yourself in that mindset of state where you know you're going to win. You are designed to win. And you're not just like telling yourself that and it's some bullshit you've spun on yourself. It's like, I know Project Me with Tiffany is impacting millions of lives and it's just going to continue to grow and morph into a huge brand. I know that. Like, I actually know that. It's not me just trying to do a manifestation trick or a psychology trick on myself. I know it, but I know it, like you said, because I have to get myself in a state. However, if you talked to me last week when I had the flu, from me not maintaining my boundaries, whether it's myself or with others, and me not keeping myself, like you said, in your in your Queen Jessie state, right? There's a price we all pay for that. For me, when I'm not staying in my Queen state, I get sick. What happens when we get sick? We're tired, our mindset, our mood, and everything goes in the toilet. So I know you're not perfect, you're human. So what happens when Queen Jessie isn't being as vigilant about your boundaries and your intentional schedule? Like what's the consequence for you? Yeah, absolutely. This is such a great question because it's going to lead into what I wanted to share based off what you just said. Um, yeah, so Queen Jessie, if she doesn't show up and become Queen Jessie every morning, she turns into, you You get sick. I get so sad. I cry over everything. I accuse my husband of things, which is just obnoxious. Like I will call him out on like, did you really just walk through the house with your shoes? Which let's just, <laughs> let's just be honest. I can't stand when the man does it, even when I'm happy, Jessie, yeah. like in a good mood, yeah, Jessie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will also be forgiving and be like, hey, babe, great, you know, kick your shoes off instead of like, did you really just walk through totally the house with your it. shoes? Right? Like, that is what I do it with my kids. And my kids, oh my God, they give that shit back to me and I wanna like pound them, right? And it's I wanna pound them not because they're obnoxious, but because I have made them that way. They, they, I've set the example, right? They see when mommy's in a bad mood, this is how she responds. Well, I'm in a bad mood and she didn't get into Queen Jessie state. So I'm not going to get into, for example, my older boy is seven and a half. I'm not going to get into King Cruise state, right? Like we kind of, we're silly. We do all of that stuff with our kids, but it's not just the rah, 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 positive affirmation. And I'm going to say something right now that your listeners can't see, but I noticed it with both of us because we're visually here watching each other. When we talked about the state that we get into, when we believe, when we really believe, right, that we are making this impact with our businesses and such, um, you physically see the difference, right? When I would get into that race car, I didn't have my shoulders slumped over like a really, I know I'm going to kick some ass today. No, right? You, your head is held high. Your shoulders are back. Your breathing isn't all scared and timid. It's steady. It's deep right? Like, you know, with every fiber of your being that this is real, that this is true. You aren't hoping for it. It might not actually exist in this moment because the future hasn't proved that I was going to win that race. The future hasn't proved yet that you've impacted 1 million lives. And I don't really know that I'm just using it as an example, right? But you can guarantee you will get there very soon because you believe it with every fiber of your being. And then your actions will prove that and it will move you more towards it. And so if you want real success and you want these things that you think you're made for more or whatever, um, you have to show up every single day as the person who wants to achieve them. I mean, that's law of attraction 101, right? Like you but attract how do what you, you are. But how do you get there when you've been beaten down maybe by, you know, a crappy significant other, or you've not dealt with stuff from your childhood, or you do suffer, you know, like I take medication for depression. So let's say you're someone who's not medicated or treated, and you have depression, or 
you have bipolar, you have something else, you know, postpartum, you have something else going on. How do you get yourself in that state when you're in a low vibe energy? How do you get from A to B? Because to most people, that would seem like from A to Z, like the old Tiffany, if I heard you right now, I would go, how in the hell does she do that? Because even from me getting to feeling a like 10% better seemed damn near impossible. Yeah, this is a great question. Okay. So number one, when I decided to get certified as a life coach, it wasn't originally for everybody else. It was because I wanted to keep myself accountable to my own shit, right? Like I knew if I didn't have to hold other people accountable that I wouldn't show up for myself. So the number one thing that I'm going to say here is accountability. You, ha- I say that it, it goes along with the power of a proxy right? When I started changing my life, up leveling my life and my business, it didn't happen because I hung out with people that didn't live that lifestyle, right? Why do I resonate with you? Because number one, you're real. You share the crap in your life, the pain, the sorrow, the guilt, the, you know, whatever, all of that. But more than that, you also share what the other side is like and what you do to make it happen in your life, right? You talk about the power that you had to create from within your deepest despair to like call yourself out and say like, no, enough is enough. So number one, that doesn't happen without accountability and without surrounding your people, yourself, excuse me, with people who are going to hold you to that, even if they don't know your name. Like, let's just be real here. I have a lot of mentors that I believe in the power of proximity with because they are where I want to be. So I read their books. I listen to their podcasts. I go to their events, right? But then the second side of this is just consistency. Consistency is the answer to almost everything that you want in your life, as long as it's positive consistency, right? I didn't fix my marriage when it was really struggling because we consistently screamed at each other. When we did that, believe me, we were almost divorced and I was pregnant, right? Like with kid number three. Um, When we consistently showed up with the plan to communicate and talk and share and go on a date once a week and so on, like, dude, the power of consistency is going to either lift you up or tear you down. So you have to make sure that you're not only holding yourself accountable and having that accountability, but that you are consistently doing what is going to positively move you forward. Because when you do that, you build momentum and it won't become as hard. Right now, it might feel like it takes 99% of you to pull yourself out of that, that bad place, right? It takes everything you have, you feel so exhausted and you still aren't moving an inch forward. But as you continue to do it, it'll be 95% and 90 and 80. And now really it's like a light switch. Okay. There might, I, I say you can quit today, but you can't quit tomorrow. Like that is one of my models. Everybody knows it. I sometimes will say, screw it. Today, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to eat ice cream. I'm going to sit in my bed. I'm going to turn on a TV and whatever I watch. And like, I'm just going to go to bed and I might even cry. It's cool. But tomorrow, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to pull myself out of this. And I can do it like that. It used to take me weeks, yeah. right? Like when I, it used to take me weeks and now I can do it overnight. Yeah, I mean, I love how my line I always say is like attracts like. So I'm not surprised at all you right that we're (laughs) that you and I are talking and connecting because like attracts like you can really see of where your vibe is at in your life by what you attract you attract a lot of shitty opportunities shitty people shitty circumstances uh shitty things that's you you're the common denominator so that's a big freaking hint but who I attract in my life now is totally different because I'm different. So like attracts like I attract, you know, great people like Jesse, you know, people who have done that work and know how to get themselves out of that state. But you're not meant to do it alone. Right. That's also why, you know, I have a business out of helping other people. And so does Jesse. You know, it's like you help show people how to do this. You don't have to try to figure out how to get out of it on your own. Right. You need someone to help you lead the way. So 
Jesse, I know you have a new um, membership program you just announced. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it was perfect timing too, because as we're sitting here talking about mottos that we live by, one of the things that I say within this membership is alone we are strong, but together we are unstoppable. And when I grew my life and business, it was because I decided to stop doing it alone, right? It was because I decided to get certified as a coach and invest also in a coach to help me and so on. So um, yeah, the new membership that we just announced last week and are inviting members into is called the Women of Impact Network. How perfect as we're sitting here talking about the power of you know working together and accountability and consistency. And that's what it is. It's a place where you can come and learn not only the strategies, but the mindset behind building your six-figure business, ditching the overwhelm, and finally going all in and building that dream that you are destined to build. So are you doing any live trainings in your group? Like where can people find out like all the details about it? Yeah. So I'm Jesse Harris Fountain on every platform, Instagram, Facebook, uh, website. And of course, I know you'll link up my name here so that they can see the spelling. But um, yeah, we actually, it's really awesome. I do a monthly group coaching live event with all of our members. I also bring in a monthly guest niche expert training. Um, we have mom squad partners. It's not really accountability. It's more than that. It's actually the authentic and organic way to start building yourself up through the power of social media with partners. Um, we have a library of master classes. There's the framework for my do it yourself, six figure business, right? Cause I think that you need to work smarter and not harder, which is something you and I both resonate with a lot, but yeah, it's like the place to go for affordable teaching. <laughs> you know, I, I know when I first started, I couldn't afford the $20,000 coaching thing that I wanted. I just, I, I couldn't, right. Or I couldn't justify it as a mom. Cause let's just talk about that moms. You don't want to make those sacrifices. You don't invest in yourself because you see it as a sacrifice in other ways. But, um, you know, the biggest thing people ask me all the time, how did you build a seven figure business? Cause guess what? The strategy was great but I focused on me first. So when I sit here and yeah, right. So when I tell you, I get up at four 30, I don't get up at four 30 and then start my day in my business and my kids. I get up at four 30 and I work out and I chug my water and I meditate and I journal and I plan and prioritize and I do my me time. I take a bath, right? Like that's what I do. I take care of me. And when I lift me up, everything else just rises with it. It's you guys, I can't, agree with that anymore. I mean, it that's why self care has to come first, your state has to come first, and the rest does follow. I could give you I could do an amazing business strategy or plan for you. So could Jesse, but I can't, you can't out strategize a shitty mindset, just like you can't, um, you can't out work out out exercise a shitty diet. Right. Yeah. And I've tried that, by the way, most of my life. Me it, too. It, Me too. Damn it if it do, damn it if it doesn't work. So you guys, if you got a lot out of this episode, I want you to take a screenshot right now and tag me at Project Me with Tiffany and tag Jesse Bouton at Jesse Harris B O U T O N. If you're driving or something like that and you forget to tag her, I will make sure as long as you tag me to tag her after the fact and share it. But let's let's share this shit and. And if you have someone else that you feel needs to hear this and needs to hear, you know, how someone else does it, you know, besides me, hear from another woman who's gone for it, who has, you know, who has four kids, who does it anyway, you guys share this damn episode, put it on social media. This way we know that you loved this content, you got something out of it so that we can build future episodes around the same stuff. I loved having you on. You are... I can see why you won all those races. You have more energy than any mom I've ever met. And it, it's, if you guys, you guys can't see her, you don't have, you know, right? You don't have the ability to see her, but it's legit. It's not like, you know, you can, you can fake energy to a certain point, but what you guys don't know is she interviewed me on her show prior. So we've been talking a while right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I got to tell you, girl, if I had four kids, I I don't think I would be doing this. Like, you have you have some special sauce. So I commend you for that. 
Oh, I adore you. Thank you for your kind words, but you know, you know that I think you're the queen. So um, thanks for having me today. Thank you. And you guys, again, take that quick screenshot. Any questions that you have of this episode, feel free to DM me and you can also DM Jesse and ask her any questions. I know she will answer all of them. I'm confident she will. And again, she's at Jesse, J-E-S-S-I-E, Harris Boughton, B-O-U-T-O-N on Instagram. All right, you guys have a great day. Bye, Jesse. <laughs> Bye, Tim. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.